So I'm introducing this video from the top of Mount Pilatus in the Swiss Alps, and this video is on deriving the differential scattering cross-section for tree-level bremsstrahlung in a nuclear electric field as described by scalar quantum electrodynamics. It's the scalar QED analog of the beta heitler formula derivation. Scalar quantum electrodynamics given by the following Lagrangian is the scalar generalization of standard quantum electrodynamics. If you are unfamiliar with how this theory is constructed and quantized, I recommend you to my video called An Introduction to Scalar QED. There is a link in the description to that video. In my Scalar QED introduction video, I discuss the standard Feynman rules. Those standard Feynman rules are given in this table here. Before anything else, we must consider the vertex function of this table, that section. From this, we see that there are two possible types of interactions. Given those two possibilities, the following three Feynman diagrams naturally give the entire tree-level contribution to Scalar QED Bremsstrahlung, where we've got one more than in the normal QED case because we've got that extra interaction in scalar QED. Of course, because we are dealing with a scattering reaction off of a Coulomb field, we have the now all too familiar problems with actually calculating the differential scattering cross-section. Namely, it is unclear a priori what the Feynman rule for a Coulombic virtual photon is, and also the usual differential scattering cross-section general formula isn't applicable because one of the incoming particles is virtual. If you didn't know, I say all too familiar because I've already done very videos on deriving the beta Heitler formula and the standard QED pair creation in a nuclear electric field differential scattering cross-section where exactly these same problems were encountered. Both of these videos appeared previously in my quantum field theory lecture series playlist. If you are interested in watching any of these videos, there are links in the description. The fact that we have solved these problems previously is of great benefit to us because we can just apply the same solution here. First, let's discuss the Feynman rule problem. The scattering cross-section problem will be discussed in the next section. In both my videos on the beta Heitler formula and standard QED pair creation, I computed the Feynman amplitude directly from matrix elements of terms in the expanded S operator without using the Feynman rules. In doing so, I naturally revealed what the Feynman rule for a Coulombic virtual photon is. The electromagnetic sector of scalar QED is the same as in normal QED, so we can apply the same Feynman rule here. Specifically, the Feynman rule we found was this. Using the above Feynman rules and diagrams, including this one, as needed to write out the Feynman Feynman amplitude immediately gives us this. We can then simplify this a little bit using obvious algebra and also the transversality of photons, which means that epsilon zero is zero, and also that the dot product between this epsilon here and that k there is zero, which eliminates that last term there and also this bit of this term. That ultimately leaves us with this. From here, we need the energy and momentum conservation relations to simplify this any further. This is where we get to the unusual relationship between the Feynman amplitude and the transition amplitude, which you may remember from my beta Heitler formula video or my standard QED pair creation video. You may also remember that the relationship is unusual because of the way the conservation delta functions get handled. Specifically, when we inserted the Coulomb potential into the transition amplitude, the Fourier transform integrals caused the three momentum conservation delta functions to be integrated over at an earlier stage in the calculation instead of being left behind in the transition amplitude. The Coulomb field insert also brought an additional delta function into the calculation which enforced this relation. For Bremsstrahlung, this left us with the following unusual relationship between the Feynman amplitude and the transition amplitude. Where q0 equals 0, we have this mechanical momentum conservation relation from that integration that's done sooner than usual, as I was talking about, and this enforces energy conservation, and that energy conservation delta function will be integrated over in the next section when we handle the differential scattering cross-section. These results also apply to the scalar case because the same Coulomb potential is inserted into the transition amplitude in the direct calculation, enabling us to avoid the direct calculation when paired with the Feynman rule that I already gave for a Coulombic virtual photon. We therefore have the energy and momentum conservation relations that we need in order to continue the simplification. We can put them together into these two relations. This conservation relation can be used to simplify down the numerators, but then also to rewrite the denominator usefully to eliminate Q from the denominator. That gets us to here, and then we can simplify down the denominators in a very straightforward way, and they do simplify down quite a bit. That ultimately gets us to here. This is all of the simplification that can be usefully accomplished up till this point. Now we move on to the differential scattering cross-section into which the Feynman amplitude must be inserted. As was mentioned previously, we have the usual problem for scattering cross-section calculations involving a Coulomb field. The usual differential scattering cross-section general formula doesn't work here because one of the incoming part 
particles is virtual. I showed how to solve this problem in my beta Heitler formula video. In fact, the only thing that one must change in the exact math given there to get what applies here is the standard normalization of the massive particle states. Specifically, we must change it from fermionic to bosonic. Making those tiny changes produces this result. A standard differential scattering cross-section is unpolarized, so we must insert a sum over the photon polarization, which gets us to this, where U stands for unpolarized. We are in search of a differential scattering cross-section that is written in terms of the solid angle differential of the outgoing particle momenta. This requires us to re-express the momentum differentials in spherical coordinates, getting us to here. We must now integrate over the final massive scalar 3 momentum magnitude to eliminate the delta function and produce the standard result. The process for completing this integration is the same as usual. We can think of this function in the delta function as a function of the thing we're integrating over, and then doing the integration leaves us with this, where this f prime function equals that. Inserting that gets us to here. It is conventional to drop the superscript and subscript notation that differentiates the differential scattering cross-section after this processing from what we started with, so these two bits of notation there. In fact, such notation is often completely ignored. I may have done this in past videos, and they often ignore it despite the fact that that means you're setting d sigma equal to multiple things that are not technically the same through the document, and you're supposed to just understand what's going on. It's not terribly difficult, which is why they probably do that, but still, it's not technically ideal. But anyway, as I said, all of this leaves us with this result. We can now return to the Feynman amplitude we calculated above, and then process it a little bit. Inserting it in here gets us to this. The first bit of processing that I did was bring this factor over here so that we can get that alpha cubed in there, and then of course I also did the square. The usual thing to do with this calculation is to apply the same parameterization that was done in my beta Heitler formula derivation video, so the standard beta Heitler formula parameterization, which is this right here, and then this parameterization gives us these values for the relevant dot products. Inserting all of that gets us to the final answer here. So now you know how to calculate the tree-level differential scattering cross-section for bremsstrahlung in a nuclear electric field as described by scalar quantum electrodynamics. I hope this video is educational. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.